Welcome back to PBS Books here at the National Book Festival in Washington. I'm Jeffrey Brown with the PBS NewsHour. I'm delighted now to be joined here by Lori Moore, novelist, short story writer, but here to talk about a new book of essays called See What Can Be Done. Nice to yes. see you. Well, great to see you again. See What Can Be Done. You, you, you write about this in the introduction, but explain. Yes. Well, many of these pieces were written for Bob Silvers at the New York Review of Books. Yeah. And he used to just FedEx things to me or just phone suddenly, you know. Very famous editor in the literary world. Very famous editor. And it's a kind of a surprising editor who liked surprises and to surprise. So he would yeah. say he would he would usually enclose a note yeah. that would say thought this would be of interest, see what can be done. And sometimes I would take the assignment and sometimes I wouldn't, yeah. but it always was see what can be done. See what can be done is a sort of gentle, but- uh, It's a little like, nudge. Like yeah. it's, a, it's do it. It's, well, you, you didn't have to, yeah. but he, he was just like saying, explore a little bit, explore this in your mind yeah. and see what you come up with. And, and was there, did he know you enough? Was he? I mean, did he know your taste or was he just giving you different things that you might be interested in? He didn't really care about taste. He wanted to sort of put unexpected things together. He also oh. would sometimes consult with me on mm -hmm. Wisconsin things. So sometimes he would match me up with the yeah. subject of Wisconsin, yeah. and which is definitely yeah. in the book. So, so but, what are they for you when you, when you put this book together? What, it, what is, how do this, you see it? This is this parallel life I've had. It's so what? It's my parallel life. Parallel life. Yeah. <laughs> it's this other life I had next to my fiction writing life, um, where I got to be a critic, a reviewer, somewhat of an essayist. Um, and it's 35 years of, of that life. And I just put it between covers to sort of see what it looked like. So ex explain to people how you have those parallel lives. Where does this part fit in? Whether it doesn't it's, fit. I mean, huh? It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. It kind of, it kind of sails along across the desk over your other stuff, but you're, you know, you're working on it. So you're, then it I goes mean, are you away. doing both at the same yes, time? Yes, of course yeah. you must. Yeah. 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 And do you, I, I mean, literally at the same time or some hours for this and some hours for that? And well, so, yeah, sometimes and it's some like hours that. hours for teaching? And some hours for teaching. Sometimes with a piece, you have a deadline that is stricter than for fiction. Yeah. Fiction deadlines are usually a little looser. Yeah. And um, so sometimes you ha do have to shove things aside for a deadline. Yeah. And teaching is very strict. So, yeah. you know, you have to Well, So to give that. people a little flavor here. I mean, it goes back 30 years. It goes. And it starts with... It I goes, mean, all kinds of authors, yeah. books, television shows. Well, it goes back actually 35 years. Yeah. And it starts when I was in my 20s and wrote a book review of Nora Ephron's Heartburn yeah. for the Cornell University Literary Magazine. Yeah. And that was my first, one of, or one of my first published reviews. Yeah. And so I included it here. What did, the heck? Did, yeah, what the heck is that? You, did you, <laughs> <laughs> but what happened when you reread it? Did you I did thought, it hold up? Well, the writing hold up? Well, I could see that I wrote it on a typewriter. I could feel the difference between things I wrote on a typewriter, That's which were more labor intensive, and things that I wrote on a word processor where I could go on more at length and didn't have to worry about should we say what a typewriter is for the young people watching it? <laughs> no, but did that, did, you, did that affect your it writing? It did. It did. It, it caused a certain kind of tightness and compression that, and a kind of shortness uh, because I was afraid of having to retype. And so I was Just very, because very it's a pain. careful. Yeah. It's, yeah. I would yeah. have to retype all the yeah. time and yeah. I didn't want to do it one more time. So I can feel that in there. Maybe I'm, it's just like a recovered memory, but yeah. it, I feel that it's actually in the prose. And then once the word processor comes along, the pieces are a little looser. But that's very interesting. I mean, do you think something's been lost or gained or? I think, it, I think um, 
the typewriter was slightly oppressive. It was a, oppressive? Oppressive. Oh. I do think that. I mean, it was it was beautiful yeah. while it was all we had. Yeah. But yeah. the idea of a, a word processor where you can change things very quickly yeah. and lose things very quickly, that's the downside. But you can change things very quickly. Yeah. And so it just gives you much more freedom. You're not terrified of making a typo. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the feeling as you're talking yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a recovered memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something lost. Right. Do you, did you um, develop a, a kind of theory of, of reviewing, of sort of what a review should be or I have? have or, you know, you there's know. so many different styles as I think about it. Sometimes a reviewer tells you the whole story, the book, or sometimes it's just at the edges of it and telling you more what he or she knows of the subject. Right. I have no rules whatsoever, but I sometimes like to insert myself in the review a little bit so that there's a bit of personal essay in the review, um, especially in the later reviews. There's, there's more of myself mm -hmm. in there because it's sometimes interesting to see where a movie or a book actually fits um, in a viewer or a reader's life. So the intersection of a real life with, with the narrative is sometimes interesting. Yeah. So my son is in there, some friends are in there, yeah. you know, other yeah. things are in there, as well as the film or the book. Yeah. But do you think of the, um, the reader in a, in a different way when you're doing a review because you're... Well, you, you, know, well, you know how this is. As a journalist, yeah. you're yeah. kind of writing for your editor. Yeah. So yeah. that's really your first reader. That's who you're thinking of as your reader. Kind yeah. of. And, yeah. then, and then beyond that, who knows? Then it's, you know, you assume that your editor will be the ideal first reader. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you see when you, I mean, are there, were there surprises when you went back about things that you wrote about? Um, you start off by saying Silvers didn't have, he didn't think about taste. Do you think about taste? Do you think about your taste? And well, I don't, it's not, I don't think about taste. I think about interest. Is this, is this interesting? Uh -huh. um, and there were things, for instance, that, you know, I was interested in, such as Stephen Stills, that other people wouldn't be interested in because he's not that current. He's not that what? Not that current. I know, that's the last one in the... I know, right? I know. Yeah. But, I, but he was coming to Nashville, and Bob was so great. He said, I would love to have a piece on Stephen Stills. Of course, there'd never been one yeah. in the New York Review. Yeah. And so I went to the Ryman, yeah. you know, hall, and I saw the concert, and I met Stephen Stills and did this piece. Yeah. So that was kind of a surprise that I, I mean, that there's music there. One thing I did notice is there's not a lot of visual art discussed. And why is that? I think it's because I knew too many visual artists and they were so full of their own opinions. So I just stayed away. Really? <laughs> I, went, I went elsewhere, yeah. You were, I mean, intimidated or just, or just wanted to give them their own? I uh, didn't. I didn't need. I didn't need to to yeah to offer up my version of things because it would. I would get smacked around a little bit. Yeah. I think. I mean, one thing that does start popping in is television, and you write television. about how yeah. you were not a. I think you said you're not a television. You were not a television watcher. I went for decades without watching television. Really. And as a child, we were not. It was highly regulated. We were not allowed to watch television. Really. Yeah. Quite a childhood. I mean, what, where, was, did you, where did you grow up? Well, I grew <laughs> up in upstate New York, and my parents were very strict, and they put the television yeah. in the, in yeah. the cellar, yeah. and it, which was an unfinished basement that you could barely stand up in. And did so you, you have had only to kind of crawl yeah. around. And a certain, number of, a, certain, a certain number of hours you were allowed, yeah. and not on school nights, yeah. and this and that. And then I went... You know, on my own, I sort of rejected television for a number of decades. But then television did start to change and some really wonderful things started to appear yeah. on it. And people started to talk about it. And then I found myself with my colleagues asking them to tell me about the things that they had seen. And I thought, right. 
I better start watching this. Right, right. Just, you know, and then also The Wire came on and everybody I knew in England had watched The Wire and right. I started watching it and it was just so right. amazing to me. One of the right the beginnings and, of the new age right, of television. Right, right? but there yeah. wasn't a lot yeah. written about yeah. The Wire initially. I mean, I was having fun flipping through and looking at, and so Friday Night Lights comes up and you're talking about at the beginning how most people don't really want to admit, or friends of yours, uh, intellectual type, so we don't want to, well, yeah. Well, it's about high school football. Right. <laughs> so people, but it was great. It was great. It was great. It really yeah. was wonderful. And it holds up. I've gone back to look at it. Yeah. I don't know if my piece holds up, but the, the show holds well, up. Well, actually, that's what I want to ask you about, holding, things holding up, because when you're reviewing and you're doing it for 35 years, there's always the question of, does the book hold up? Does the art movie hold up? What about when you went back to the reviews? Have well, I hope so. I mean, there's something about reviews. I mean, reviews are a conversation with the culture, and, mm -hmm. and it's a record of... It's a record in real time of yeah. things that you're interested in and others are interested in. Yeah. And then the conversation about those things. And so one hopes that that's important and that, that keeping a record of that is of interest. It's of interest to me. I love reading old, old reviews, you old do? film reviews and book reviews. I absolutely do. You can see so much going on in them that registers the daily life yeah. of, the, of the reviewer. Yeah, but what about as a as a a, a a writer who reads, who loves writing? I mean, when you went when you go back, have your ideas about or, or you know has what excites you about writing changed? So that if you read some of these earlier ones now, you think you'd see them differently? Or I don't I don't think so. I think I don't think I would. I think that. Even 35 years ago, I was a writer, yeah. um, and I was reading Nora Ephron and looking at her sentences and looking at what she did with her particular story, right. and I don't think my opinion would change at all. Yeah. But it's getting loud back here. It's very loud. It's very <laughs> we loud. Just, Are we, we done? Just, <laughs> we just have a minute, but let me just ask you about your teaching role. Oh. So, do you include the the reviewing, I mean, as a kind of assignment or something you tell your students to do too? You know, I haven't done that. You have not. But they write reviews of each other's work. And so we do discuss criticism oh, you do. in yeah. that informal yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't yet done a kind of official reviewing class. That might be interesting to do. It, it seems like it would be a good uh, thing for them yeah. to do. Maybe I'll do it next semester. All right. That's a good, good idea. Thank you. Students, you heard it here first, right? <laughs> okay. All right. The book is See What You Can Do. Lori Moore, thank you very much. Thank you. And do stay with us here at the PBS Books, here at the National Book Festival. Oh. We'll be right back.